It was such a nice weekend that I thought I'd go out and get cultured. Stephen here for Bland Designs and this is Monday, July the 31st, 2017 and this is vlog number 29. Hard to believe that I started these 29 weeks ago. Anyways, have a little coffee. And it's a nice sunny day here for a change, which is nice. And it's hard to believe it's the end of July, but time flies when you're having fun. So let's talk about having fun. What have I been up to? Well, I showed you this last week and I have a video of me making this. Um, this is my new art journal and it was an old recycled cookbook See, that I found at Value Village, a thrift store. And I've done the cover and I did the cover in something that I'm going to talk about in a couple of minutes but uh, I made my own stickers and I have a whole video for this and the link for this will be uh, below. Um, but I'm really enjoying this and I just want to show you some pages that I've done. Now, th these pages were done using um, Tim Holtz's uh, paper, paper dolls, called Tim Holtz Paper Dolls, and uh, another set he calls Layers. And I had a lot of fun just layering them along, and I did these two pages too. And these two pages are based on Mike Deacon's digital downloads. I have them all. I really like them. And what I've decided to do in this particular journal is to focus more on collage work uh, using a lot of the digital downloads that I have uh, purchased from Mike Deacon uh, for this as well. Uh, I'm noticing something about my art journaling style. Um, sometimes I use way too many products on a page and I turn it to mud. Um, and I'm thinking about that page that I did for the Mission Inspiration for July. I wasn't really happy with that because I'd used so many different things. Uh, so I think I'm going to start limiting myself to the number of things I use on a page. Uh, Sort of do that minimalist type of thing. Um, but anyways, so this is inspiring. I find I find any time that I make a new journal inspiring. The problem is I have all kinds of different styles of journals laying all over the house that have nothing in them. It's just because I enjoy making them. Um, in some ways, I wish I could find an outlet where I could, you know, sell them or I don't know if anybody want to buy them, really. I mean, think about it what you're going to get back in return as far as the money is concerned you're not going to get much uh, not for the time that you put into it and that kind of thing but i'd be happy donating a lot of this stuff to some group that might be able to sell it to make some money money for a charity or something like that i should look into that a little bit more and see what i can um, find out i guess my biggest problem with doing that is to think uh, if they rejected me because the stuff wasn't good enough um, I do have those kind of inner fears. I'm not that self-confident of, of a person. I know I doesn't look like it when I do these videos, but uh, I do have these inner demons kind of a thing. I guess we all do. Anyways, how did I get onto that? Let's move on. Okay, I've also, I have a friend's birthday coming up and I've made her something uh, special, one of my paintings, but I want to also wrap it in a special way as well. So. I've been playing with this idea of doing um, mixed media gift bags. I've played with the idea. I haven't done anything until now. So I had this plain brown. I'm hiding my face here. I'm just trying to get it all in. I had this plain brown paper bag um, with the handles on it. And I thought, what the heck? Let's give it a try. I didn't really give it a lot of thought. I slapped down some gesso. Then um, I have a stack of Graphic 45 uh, paper pads, and I love the Graphic 45 paper pads, but I'm not using them. So I thought I'd get out one, and this was, I think, the lady's diary or something, and I cut out the pieces for that, found some more bits and pieces from my stash, and just layered them all on, and I think this bag turned out quite nice. Now, when I put her, ga uh, her, her gift in, I'm going to foo-foo it all up, foo-foo it all up with some, you know, tissue paper and stuff and some ribbons. And I'm going to make some of the ribbons. I'm going to customize those as well um, using my uh, P-Touch embellish, which I talked about last week. Okay, so that's some of the things I've been up to. Anything else? Oh, yes. Um, there are some videos on my YouTube. It's a mini-series on how to make your own stickers using labels. 
and oops, dropped some on the floor. I had a lot of fun with this. And some of these are my own designs from previous projects, which I had digitalized. I'd taken pictures of them, put them in my computer, easy enough to print them out on a sticker sheet. Um, some of them I did on jelly plate. Um, well, I've got a whole bunch of different methods and it's just fun. You make up a whole big stack of these. And basically that's what I used on the cover of this journal. I just used my stickers. And in fact, I did the same thing as a background to these two pages. And I think they come out really nice. They're fast, uh, they're colorful, and they're your art. So anyways, I do have a series of videos on how to do that on my channel. And uh, if you're interested, I'll put the links below. There are three of them. It's a mini series and I call the first one, what do I call it? I'm looking here. Making stickers with your own art, number one. And then there's number two, and then there's number three. And in number three, you see me actually do the cover of that journal that I just showed you. So check it out. Um, I think, you know, it's a fun technique. Okay, so what's next? All right, so let's talk about the YouTube channel of the week. This week's YouTube channel of the week is one by Vicky, and everybody knows her. But I can't say her last name, so I'm going to spell it. So her first name is Vicky, and her last name is P-A-P-A-I-O-A-N-N-O-U. Now, you may know how to pronounce her last name correctly, but um, regardless of that, she has great videos about art journaling, card making, mixed media. She's been around for quite a while. She's very, very professional. She makes her living, I think, doing this kind of thing. And she's been on various uh, craft shows. And she's also done several videos that you can purchase as well. Um, I think she may even have a book that she has written as well. So this is a lady who you're going to learn a lot from in a very professional environment. So do check out Vicky, P-A-P-A-I-O-A. N N O U. So as I mentioned in that video, um, Vicky is very, very good. She is a, a professional artist uh, by uh, career choice as well. So you get some really great ideas from her and her stuff is, is gorgeous. Okay, so what's pissing me off this week? Well, let's talk about snail mail. We've all been there. We all know why it's called snail mail. It is slow. I have those several pet peeves with the Canadian Post Office service. They have these ads on TV right now talking about that they move more parcels across this country than any of the other couriers combined and all this stuff. Quite frankly, I don't believe that. I don't believe it for a couple of reasons. One, they are not fast. Oh yes, you can get expedited pay, uh, uh, parcels and things like that and it costs you an arm and a leg. Um, pretty much as much as it costs you for same-day delivery from a courier service, maybe even a little bit more. Um, and even though you've paid for that, there's no guarantee that it's going to arrive when they say it's going to arrive. Or it's going to arrive where it's supposed to arrive. I don't know how many times I've gotten the wrong mail in my mailbox. Um, and why is that? Okay, you can understand if the number of the house or whatever is like within one digit, but I've been getting mail for people that don't even live in the same town that I live in. How's that happen? Um, I guess they just can't read. I think I know why things like that happen. It's because our mail service in this country, um, we are a country that is built upon uh, democratic socialistic philosophy. Socialistic in the terms that the state looks after its people, but that's because we pay a lot of taxes to be looked after, and uh, that things are publicly owned, not privately owned. However, over the last few years, at both the federal and the provincial levels, that's been changing. Uh, the federal government and the provincial government has been selling our public-owned businesses, like Hydro One, for example, out to third-party private companies. And, yeah... Americans think you get a better deal when things go privatized because that's part of their philosophy. In Canada, no, it's a recipe for disaster. Um, and the mail system is a fine example of this. Many years ago, they decided to give us those mailboxes that are community mailboxes. Rather than giving you door-to-door -door delivery, they put this stupid thing three blocks away from your house. 
and uh, they shove all the mail in there. So services decreased from that. Um, second of all, they've hired third-party companies to deliver their mail. Uh, the days of look, finding the postman walking down the street with his big bale of mail on his big bag of mail on his shoulder, those are over. Um, it's a very impersonalized service, and these th third-party companies that do these, um, basically, I think they're working for a low wage, and they're not hiring people who really care about the job. At least, if they care, they don't show it. I.e., can't get mail in the right mailboxes. Um, the things come to you busted up, damaged, whatnot. It's just a pain in the butt. So, for example, the other day, I've been waiting for that glass mat I was telling you about for my Caterpillar Pro uh, Glow. Well, it finally arrived. Check the mailbox on the weekend. There was a notice in there that the parcel had arrived. Yeah, that's the other thing. They used to put the parcel notices right on your doorstep. They'd stick them to your door or something like that. No, now they just throw them in the mailbox whenever. And you have to go to another place to pick it up. And it's not a post office. It's usually an outlet in a shopper's drug mart. And you go in there and you get your item. Well, okay. I don't have a big problem with that because the shopper's drug mart is only half a mile away from my house. So that's easy enough to get to. And I'll have to say one thing. The lady that's the regular person at that kiosk, she's usually she's a bit of a nutball. But she's usually very good at what she does. And she, you know, and I think she takes pride in what she does as well. She's rare. She's rare. So I go down there and lo and behold, I had to pay them more money. There was COD. I don't know why there was COD. Uh, maybe that's from the company. It's the same company that I got the Caterpillar uh, Glow from. And I don't think I paid. Well, I think I did pay some shipping on it then in the price. Um, but that was fine. But why why did I get this as COD? I have no idea. And the thing is, you don't know. They can't tell you. Post office is, is tighter with its security than a bank, practically. You don't know what you're paying for with them. You know, which is another thing that I find very annoying about the post office, dealing with them. Okay, what else about the post office? Why I try to avoid the post office? Well, first of all, the price of stamps. They're a buck a pop. So, a couple of years ago, when they raised the price up to a buck a pop, I said, mm, guess what? I'm not sending out Christmas cards anymore. I send out only a few and not even real Christmas cards. I send out electronic versions. It's more like a little newsletter kind of a thing um, to people. But the, the reason for that is strictly economics. I mean, if I send out 50 Christmas cards, that's 50 bucks, plus the cost of the Christmas cards. No matter whether you make them yourself or you buy them, there's still a cost involved gets a little expensive for sending out something that usually people display at Christmas time and then, you know, New Year's Day comes and they pitch them all in the garbage. You know, why bother? And, you know, I understand that because that's exactly what I do. I used to hang on to the cards for years and years thinking I could make something out of them. No, didn't happen. Got rid of them. Unless they were handmade ones. If they're ones handmade by people and the whole bit, no, those ones I keep because I know how much time and effort went into that. But anyways, I digress. So the expense of mailing anything through the post office as well. Um, it is not a convenient thing. Uh, it, that's why Amazon does so well. That's why any, any of those party people that you order anything from, send them by courier. You get it faster. It doesn't cost much more, if more at all, and you're pretty much guaranteed that you're going to get it. Not like uh, in the post office. Don't ever lose anything in a post office in Canada, because you'll never see it again. It goes to a big, deep, bottomless pit somewhere, probably in the Canadian Arctic, where no one's ever going to find it again. And um, I have sent some things, and I have paid extra to have it tracked. Doesn't guarantee it's not going to get lost. Doesn't guarantee they're going to find it. But you pay this extra money in order to track it. I don't know. I could go on and on. I could go posty on the post office. But quite frankly, it's just not a service industry anymore that really gives a poop about anybody. It, they, they don't. They don't care. And that is partially because our government has allowed the post office to privatize, go to third-party 
uh, companies for some of their services. So nobody cares anymore. No quality. Nothing. And I suppose that could be said about almost any business anymore out there uh, in the world. Uh, the days of personalized service, of people who care about giving you good service, who care about their jobs, I don't think they're there anymore. Not at least with the big big companies, the big institutions. Maybe with the mom and pop stores, yeah. Um, but not with the big corporations. But anyways, that's what's pissing me off this week is snail mail. Okay, moving on. What do we got? Okay, product reviews, new stuff. I forgot to mention this last week. I ordered a series of DVDs from um, North, what do they call it? North Light Publishing, which are affiliated with Interweave and Cloth Paper Scissors, um, that kind of stuff. And they have sections where they have video courses. Some of them you can download um, right direct. I like those ones actually better than I have to wait around for the discs to come. But they had a special on a four DVD set by a woman by the name of Ray uh, Missigman, I think. Ray McSigman. And she's very good. And in these four, she's doing all kinds of mixed media techniques. Now, I've just started watching um, the art journaling exercises, which so far I'm very impressed with, and I've gotten some really great ideas uh, from this disc uh, as well. These also came with a couple of downloadable um, lesson plans for some other projects. And you also got, um, I think, three stencils that she herself had designed. So, and she uses them in these videos, and you can see how she uses them and follow suit. It's not cheap, but they had a good sale on. This was about a hundred and some dollars for the complete set, but they had it down to about 80 US, I think. It ended up costing me about a hundred, hundred and five dollars Canadian. Um, and it came fairly quickly. Um, but I love, I love learning online. I love, you know, watching these other people's videos and things like that. It gives me a lot of great ideas. Um, I have quite a library of digital um, courses for different things. And I usually watch them in the morning when I'm uh, on my treadmill. Um, so anyways, I do recommend these. But I suggest you go to Cloth Paper Scissors, check out their store, check out what they have in video. Their prices aren't bad, and oftentimes they have uh, bundles like this on special price, which are a, a good deal. Um, but check that out if you want ideas. Yes, we have YouTube, and YouTube has lots of stuff, but sometimes you want to see something that's a little bit more professionally done, a little bit more structured than what may, you may find on YouTube. So, that's very good. I bought something this week that I've got right in front of me now and I can't show it to you. The reason I can't show it to you is because I have stuff sitting on top of it all. Well, actually, no. I might be able to. Bear with me. Just moving a few things out of my way. I don't want to spill my coffee. I bought, well, you know that my craft bench, which is right below me right now, um, is uh, has a glass. I had uh, when I redid my craft room, I had a thick piece of glass cut to fit over top of it, and it looks really good. And th the reason I did that, as opposed to putting down a self-healing mat on top of it, is because if I do any heating of anything, and I do a lot of that, the self-healing mats were warping, but the glass won't. Plus, the glass is easy to keep clean, and I could use it as a paint palette off to the side. But when I make my videos, the lights overhead will reflect up off the glass and as you know and I put a piece of um, what do you call it you know deli paper over in that section so those lights don't don't become a disruption uh, when someone's watching my videos so we were in Ikea on the weekend and I love going to Ikea because they have all kinds of interesting little doodads uh, around your house and the prices are pretty good too um, well I came across in their desk section came across their desk blotters and their desk blotters are these. I won't get it all in the shot, but that's, they're just a simple sheet of plastic. One side is smooth. One side is kind of rough, but it so it doesn't slide around. And it fits dandy right on my uh, tabletop here. Now, I can't cut with this, but that's okay because I have cutting mats 
that I can put up on top, no problem. I have umpteen million different cutting mats. Um, but what I do like about this is one, it's sort of a frosted color. So I'm not going to get the glare from the lights overhead when I make my videos, when I'm on top of this. And I can use it as a paint palette or a medium palette because it's plastic. Everything just wipes right up off it, beads right up, no problem cleaning it. Um, and it protects my glass top a little bit as well and gives me just gives me a nice work area. And the thing was the price. Canadian, $8.99. Can't go wrong with that. And as I said, it's a non-slip base on it. It's perfect. It works perfect. Before that, I was using the Tim Holtz. Uh, actually, I wasn't using Tim Holtz, but they're just like the Tim Holtz. It's the Kukina um, cooking sheets, silicone cooking sheets. But I had to put tape, painter's tape, all the way around it. And it worked fine. But the problem with the painter's tape was it gets dirty like very soon and it leaves a residue when you peel it off off the glass and things like that so this way i don't have to worry about that so it's amazing what you can find at ikea it was probably called a flukendolfen or something like that you know how ikea has fun names for things like a fluber or a gong or something like that whatever apparently those are real words apparently i just thought they made them up but i had a girl in my class one time who grew up in Sweden and uh, she said no she says those are real words yeah go figure okay a little sip of coffee I hope I'm looking into the camera today I keep wanting to look over to the side and I'm sure you've caught me a couple times doing that because I've caught myself well what's next okay got my little notes here so I got the non-stick mat that oh okay as I've mentioned finally the caterpillar the Caterpillar Glow Glass Mat, say that five times fast, arrived. I got it on the weekend, and it was worth the wait. I mean, that company, I was getting a little worried because I had sent them two email messages and a phone message asking them, you know, about an update on when they were going to deliver these things, and I never heard from them at all. And then I was watching Ken's creation uh, the middle of the week, and he had gotten his and he got it from the same place so i thought oh, okay they must have come in they're probably in the process of shipping them out and they did and i got it as i've already mentioned i had to pay 14 dollars extra canadian cod at the post office to pick it up but that's okay it was worth it it's a nice thick piece of glass and well i did a very quick little uh video about that so i'm just going to insert that right here so here's the uh, caterpillar or sorry cutter pillar glow glass mat that I've been waiting for quite a while for. I almost gave up that I was ever going to get it, but I did get it and it's really great. It's very thick, high quality glass. Sorry about the glare that's on. This is coming from my window and I do have the light coming up uh, from the glow board itself. It has these little plastic corners that you can take off that protect it. Now right now I've got it sitting on top of the mat, but it's a non-stick or a non-slip surface. So it fits on there quite nice and it's all marked with the gauge. So it's pretty good. The only problem I had was I had to pay an additional $14 Canadian when it arrived at the post office, set so COD. So basically this glass plate co cost me in Canadian money, probably about 50 bucks um, for it. So I'm assuming actually the COD meant that the shipping was not free uh, on this particular one. Whereas when I got the board, the cutter pillar glow board I didn't pay any shipping on that I don't think but anyways I have it now great now I just need to use it so what else happened this week well on Saturday it was a beautiful day on Saturday we decided to go to a place called Kleinberg which is about 50 minutes away from us um, to go to the McMichael gallery the McMichael gallery houses uh, a huge collection of group of seven painters works um, it's one of the foremost galleries in Canada uh, it's not a huge gallery but its claim to fame is that it has a lot of Tom Thompson and group of seven paintings in it and if you're not sure who group of seven are uh, which means you're probably not Canadian Group of Seven are probably our most famous painters. They started landscape painting and they did it in such a style that's very unique 
to our Canadian culture, to our Canadian style. Um, beautiful work. They painted in the uh, early 1920s as a group. And many of them, of course, uh, went beyond the group of seven and painted further. And one of those was Lauren Harris. And Lauren Harris is actually sort of given the title of being the founder of the group of seven. Um, but he, in his own right, was uh, a really great painter. And he started off doing landscapes, but his style eventually moved into abstract. And you know I'm all about abstract these days. So we went up to take a look at his uh, abstracts and they are gorgeous and I bought a book when I was up there let me grab it's near by me Higher State uh, Lauren Harris and uh, this has a lot of the a lot of pictures of his abstracts and his work and his stuff is gorgeous and I find it very inspiring and I'm going to try my hand at a little bit of this and see what I can come up with. I mean, <laughs> I'll never be Warren Harris. But um, it was a very interesting display. And the whole setting of the uh, Michael Gallery is, is beautiful. And so to give you just a bit of a feel of it, I took a few clips and strung them together uh, about our uh, few hours that we were up there. So you can see for yourself. Okay, so it's Saturday and we thought we'd come up to Kleinberg and be cultural. So we're going to the McMichael Collection. The McMichael Collection is famous for having um, a whole lot of the Group of Seven. And if you don't know who the Group of Seven are, they are one of the foremost painters groups in Canada. They painted at the uh, beginning of the 1900s and up into the 1920s or so. And they're very, very famous, and this is probably the largest collection of their works in one spot. And they've also expanded now. They used to be exclusively all Canadian uh, Group of Seven. Now they've extended, though, into abstract with it, which is why we're here, because we want to see the abstracts. So this art gallery is in the middle of uh, about 100 acres park with uh, sculpture out in the park, such as that. And you have a picnic out here, you can wander trails, and this is the actual art gallery itself. And at the time that it was built, it was considered uh, very modern, and it's still very modern looking. So one of my favorite group of seven is Lauren Harris, and they're having a big display right now of all his abstract work, so that should be interesting. Unfortunately, I couldn't do any videoing of the Lauren Harris exhibit because there wasn't any photography allowed in there. But here's another part of the gallery as well with some very interesting works. I'm not really sure what this is a display of. Oh, it's called Size Matters. Oh, I like that. This graffiti. Hands inside. So, what's the size of this sucker? <laughs> The what? Those three paintings in the picture of here. Oh, okay. Interesting. So here's another part of this particular exhibit. And here we have a huge acrylic pool. Don't think I'm up to that yet. And this is also what the Sag Gallery is famous for, is the indigenous paintings and pieces here as well. Of course, this whole gallery is situated upon 100 acres of forested land and it, out, and the whole building is designed so you can see outside as well so it sort of fits right into nature and this is just one set of the many windows when you go through the gallery where you can see outside and here's an interesting mixed media piece as well all made of canvas pieces There's 
So again, you can see on one of these walkways inside that there's lots of windows looking on the outside. And lots of indigenous art as well. So this is the McMichael Gallery. Um, it's too bad I couldn't show you a lot of the Lauren Harris stuff because it was wonderful, but it's all no photography taken of it or video. But I did buy a book and some postcards with some of his work in it and his abstract stuff is really interesting. So I'll have to look at that, see what I can do with it in my own art. So that was pretty much my week. Um, what's coming up? Uh, well, the long weekend in August. We call it the Civic Holiday Weekend. Um, it's a little different from other holiday weekends in this country because this one basically stores, uh, it's not statutory, so stores don't have to be closed on that day. Um, it's up to them. Um, it's just an excuse for another holiday in the middle of, uh, of the summer and everybody looks forward to that. Um, we don't have any specific plans for the long weekend. I don't know what we're going to do, um, if anything at all, but hopefully the weather will be nice. I've just taken a quick look over here out my window and it's a nice day today. And I think this week it's supposed to be hot, which is okay by me because we don't get enough summer in this country. And so we have to take advantage of it, of the heat when it comes. And this summer's been hit and miss on that kind of thing so far. So yesterday and the day before were great days. And today looks like a great day. And so great day to be outdoors. Don't know how I'm going to do it outdoors, but it'd be a great day to be outdoors. And an exciting thing that's happening tomorrow is the scrapbooking store that um, I used to work at. And I still do sort of work for them in behind the scenes and where I place all my orders and everything is opening up their new location. This is exciting for everybody involved. Um, exciting for the owner, for Carol, uh, because it's a much better facility than what she was in. That she probably doesn't have to worry about floods from the apartments above anymore, which is one of the reasons why she's moved. And uh, she's got it all, she's gonna have it all decked out. She's trying to go for sort of a boutique, bo boutique, Try it. Rent it. I mean, it's morning. I haven't, I've, this is my first cup. Okay. Um, she's trying to do a boutique style kind of place. So I'm going in there tomorrow for the grand opening and I'm going to do a video and I'm going to post the video on, on the channel that I've set up for the store. And you can find that channel by just doing a search in the YouTube uh, search box. Just put in class act, all one word. Um, and you'll find, uh, Oh, put in class act Oshawa. Oshawa is O-S-H-A-W-A. -A. Um, otherwise, you're going to find a whole bunch of things with class act in front of them. And you'll see some of the past videos I've done. There isn't a lot on there because we haven't done that many. But this one that I make tomorrow will definitely be there later in the day, if not the day next. And I think I may also post a copy of it here on my channel as well. Uh, so you can see this new store. I'm quite excited about it. Um, so that's going to be fun. Anything else happening this week? Uh, nothing else that I can think of. I've got some projects in mind that I want to work on. So uh, you'll see those next week on the next vlog. And uh, just as a final note, I just went over 2,000 subscribers on about Friday. Okay, in the big scheme of things in YouTube, I am not even on the level of a mosquito. Okay, 2,000, 2K subscribers, yay, um, impresses me. But I've been putting out these YouTube videos now, you know what, for about four years. And it's only been in about the last year where I guess I've been got, I, I've become more known or whatnot uh, out there. Um, and that's okay. Um, Sure, it would be wonderful to have a million subscribers. I have no idea what that feels like. In fact, I did a little research on the weekend. We were sitting watching YouTube on Friday night, Saturday night, as we often do, um, with a few glasses of wine. <laughs> few, yeah, okay, enough said about that. Um, and uh, I thought, hmm, let's see, what are the top YouTube videos of all time in terms of subscribers, channels? Holy crap. 
There are people out there with 17 point something million, 25 point something million subscribers. They have as many subscribers as some countries have people. Really. And then I was trying to figure out what are people watching? What attracts them? This was disappointing. Why do they have that many subscribers? Because they're no better than tabloid newspapers in England or in any other countries around that say, you know, three-headed alien gave birth to my two-headed daughter, something like that. They're like one of them who's got something like 8 million, 10 million subscribers. She's a blonde. And yes, I do mean that in the most derogatory term because that's how she sounds on there. I don't know if, it, if, if she's putting on an act or what. I'm talking about beauty makeup tips. You know, how to keep your mascara from clumping or what shade of eyeshadow you should wear to a cocktail party. I don't know. But this is what people subscribe to. Okay. I don't know. I guess I think that, you know, you... you, you go and you support a channel because it's got content on it that you're interested in and it's quality stuff. It's not wasting your time, but I guess a lot of people like their time wasted. Well, I hope you don't feel that your time is wasted when you watch my vlogs or my other uh, videos at all. I try to make things, I try to give you what I would like to see. Basically, that's how I operate. Um, so I'm really proud of the fact, though, that I'm over 2,000 subscribers, okay? That, to me, it, it, ju it just makes me feel good, period, okay? I'm not in competition with anybody. I'm not making any money from all of this. Yeah, I get a few pennies for the advertisements that pop up, but, I mean, it's only a few pennies, believe me. And I've mentioned that before. But it just makes you inside feel like every time you get a new subscriber, that you're doing something worthwhile okay so anyways I'm happy and I'm ho I'm glad that you people who come here and watch me all the time um, I hope you're getting something out of it and you're enjoying it and once again I've said if there's something you would like me to do an experiment or something uh, let me know and if it's in, within my power to do so I will give it a shot nothing ventured nothing gained okay enough have a good week have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.